Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back. To another Monday Grub Bag. Monday Grub Bag. Thank you for everyone that uh, said you liked our new title. Hey, we were very hard on that. Yes. Shane had a lot of input in the sound that played. That was the longest process. That, yeah, deciding on what song we both agreed, and it, it turned out a little more dramatic than I think I would have picked, but I hope you liked it. I was yelling for epic. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, so our, our shot right now is not centered. We're trying to hide the dirty side of our office. Yeah. And you're just gonna have to live with it. Yeah. If you're a fan of symmetry, then this is not gonna be. Your Monday day. Grub Bag is not for you. Wow. Leave. Okay. Monday Grub Bag is a series where we answer all of your most burning questions. Where do we get those questions? We get them from the comment sections of our Monday Grub Bag. So if you have a question that you would like us to answer in a coming week, then leave it in the comment section. Absolutely. And this week, we're gonna be telling you about my foot fetish. That is not a joke, not clickbait. We're telling you about it, so stick around. Oh boy. We have great questions this week. <laughs> I say that every week, but they really are fun. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Alright, question number one. Uh, what was the scariest moment of each of your lives? <laughs> Setting off with a real banger. Yeah, go ahead. You want me to go? Sure. There was a day when Hannah and I were still dating long distance, and so we would have phone calls and FaceTimes often throughout the day. Hannah was in her school cafeteria, and she was having like, I don't know, quick breakfast before class. And so she told me, and we were chatting, it's lovely, you know. All of a sudden, I hear, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recreate what I heard. You tell a joke. All right? You told a I, joke. Yeah, I would say a joke. And I hear, oh, ha, ha. <coughs> And I, <laughs> I begin to go, Hannah, 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 it sounded like choking. Hannah, you're there? Nothing. <coughs> oh my god, Hannah, do you need help? Like, uh, is there anyone around you? And then, the phone hangs up. I, my heart fell all the way through my pants, into the floor. Hannah, Hannah, oh my god, called her back, nothing. I, I ended it. Okay, I immediately... Do you want to tell them what happened? What happened is <laughs> this was maybe Shane's scariest moment. It was my most embarrassing moment of my entire life. This is the most embarrassing moment of my entire life. I choked on cranberry juice. <laughs> on cranberry juice. I choked on cranberry juice. I inhaled so much of it. I it was it was scary at first because I couldn't breathe and I couldn't move it. Like there was just nothing happening and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. That was the noises that I heard. Yeah, it was hey, just gurgling. That like, was Hannah almost dying. There was nothing, no air coming in. I couldn't cough. It was just like it was horrible and Shane in my ear is like Hannah and I cannot speak I can't even call I can't breathe like nothing so I hang up because I'm like well this is first of all you're stressing me out second of all I, I want to text him I choked on grammar juice <laughs> like I needed to communicate that to you and I couldn't over the phone so I hung up and then you called back and I hung up on you again because I was like just let me text you how long anyway, did it take to resolve? It took about 10 seconds before I finally got enough like force to get a tiny cough out. Uh -huh. Okay, so I get it out, juice all over me, <laughs> all over me, okay? I'm sitting in the center aisle and there's two aisles on each side of me. So like people, people ever, I'm in the middle. I'm just in the middle of a giant room. Okay, I get the, I get the juice out onto my lap and I go, <laughs> I breathed like that, like, for like three minutes. Wow. I could not breathe without making that sound for like three minutes. And people were looking and I was just like, and then finally I called Jane back and I was like, okay, so I just choked. And I just finished my breakfast there because I was like, if I run out, then these people are going to be like, yeah, like someone helped maybe her. she died, but I just sat there and then I finally recovered and I finished my breakfast. And even though it maybe only took like a minute before Hannah called me back, yeah. That was the longest, scariest minute of my life. I thought she was dead, and I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I contemplated it all in 911, <laughs> but like at the minute mark, I think she texted like, 
choking, but I'm okay. Yeah. Whatever. Like, one minute, I'll be fine. Yeah. Oof. Wow. Serious moment. I wonder, like, everybody in that room has their <laughs> version of that story of, like, the weird girl that was breathing. <laughs> I was so... I cannot overestimate. Like, I mean, over... State yeah. over state, how loud my breathing was. It was mortifying. So, wait, that wasn't your scariest moment. Oh, though. okay. That was your most embarrassing moment. That was my most embarrassing moment for sure. My scariest moment was when I was on a train with my mom from Poland to Hungary, and it was an overnight train. So, we had a little cabin with two bunk beds in it. And as we were like boarding the train and stuff, the conductor was coming around and getting tickets and helping us with luggage and all that. And every time he would come by, he would be like, make sure you lock the door with the bolt and also use the chain. And we were like, okay, like we're going to lock it. That is the introduction to a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know. He was like, you need to make sure you also use the chain. And we were like, okay, we'll use the chain. Then he came by for like one last check at 10 p.m., knocked on our door. We unlocked it and didn't have the chain on. And he was like, where is the chain? Put the chain on the door. And we were like, okay, okay. So we like closed the door and we were like, good night, Mr. Conductor. Like put the chain on the door. Did you really say good night, Mr. Conductor? <laughs> no. But we're just saying like he literally came to see if we had the, tri the chain on the door. Right. And we were still awake, so we hadn't chained it yet. Like I was still going to go to the bathroom. Like we had to leave, you right. know? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, no, no, no. Chain always on the door. Okay. So it was. I would have gotten off the train right there. <laughs> I would have been like, if it's that important, I don't need to be here. <laughs> oh my god, we didn't realize how important it was. And there was a big storm that night, so I woke up and wind was howling, rain is hitting the windows. This it's is also loud. a horror movie. Yes, it was horrific. The train is moving really fast, so I'm like jostling around. I'm like, oh my god. I wake up, it's about two in the morning. And Shane is still awake because he's back in Pennsylvania. So the time difference, I was like, oh, Shane's awake. So I texted yeah. him and I was like, I can't sleep. Right. As I'm doing that, I text Shane, I can't sleep. And all of a sudden, our train compartment door opens. I was sitting on the toilet, by the way, <laughs> just for background. I was pooping. I so our train door opens and that shouldn't be possible because we locked it and we have the chain on the door. The chain is still on, so it's only open four inches and a flashlight comes into the room. And at this point, I'm like confused. I think maybe it's the conductor like unlocking the door. Because I was like, who has a key to our room? Like maybe it's the conductor unlocking it to see if we have a chain on the door. Like, right. He's really invested in this. But I don't want to like be involved in this situation. So my instinct for some reason was to turn my phone over and pretend to be asleep as the flashlight comes into the room. After texting me, Someone's coming into our room. Yeah. Both of these stories have similarities. Yeah, where you're left hanging. I'm left wondering if you're about to die. <laughs> so I text in and I'm like, someone someone just opened our door. Uh huh. And then I flip my phone over as the flashlight, it, he was like looking around the room and then it went to my mom's face. And he can't see me because it's pitch black in the room and the flashlight is only on my mom. And you're in the top bunk. And I'm in the top and I'm like six inches from the roof, so I'm pretty hidden. And then all of a sudden he's moving the flashlight up to me. So I close my eyes and I'm like kind of propped up. Like, I don't know why he thought I'd be sleeping like this. So <laughs> I pretend to be asleep. The flashlight is on my face for a few seconds and then it goes away. So I open my eyes. He has, he puts it in his mouth and takes out chain cutters. It is not the conductor by the way. Like now I see that this is just some random man. And there's another guy behind him. Like I can see two people's <laughs> faces. And I was like, oh my God, they're chain cutting our thing like they're gonna get into the room and once they're in the room like this is over I don't know what I'm gonna do so I was like I need to do something I really wanted my mom to wake up she was asleep so I said excuse me what are you doing because I didn't want to be rude but I was also I really should have screamed but I also didn't want them to like shoot me you want me to be friendly to the yeah seniors. so I was like excuse me what are you doing like a little bit rude like what are you doing <laughs> and he just looked up at me with the flashlight in his mouth and I glared down at him and then he just closed the door. Oh my god. So they were trying to rob you. Yeah, they were trying to get our suitcases. Wow. That's terrifying. Yep. So that was probably the scariest moment. And I had to confront the intruder. And I guess he was like, didn't want to deal with, you know. You, you're basically the hero in that story. I am the hero in that story. You saved the day. And then we sat awake the rest of the night. I woke my mom up. She didn't believe me. She thought I dreamt it. I showed her the text that I had said to Shane. And she was like, oh my god. And like eight minutes elapsed between yeah. Hannah telling me someone's coming in and then Hannah saying, I'm fine. Yep. Another really long, scary moment for me. <laughs> yeah. Someone's <laughs> breaking in and then nothing for eight minutes. That's, that's a lot. 
uh, on an overnight train in the middle of Europe yep. after that conductor has warned her <laughs> to lock the door very, very carefully. We went out into the hallway after and they were gone. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know where they went. Yeah. Because we were going to, like, warn somebody. We told the conductor when he came around, but he was like, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. He was like, yeah, did you have your chain on? I told you. They robbed it every night. He, he was like, I've never seen chain cutters before. Wow. Like, the whole, he's never seen that. That's scary. Yeah. Okay. If you controlled the weather around your house, what would it be like? What time would it rain? Would you ever let it get cold? Wow. <laughs> what a unique question. I know. It's really fun. Do you want to start? How would you... Uh... Well, my ideal weather is what it is like right now in early fall where it's warm during the day but very crisp in the mornings and evenings. So I would have that year round. If it had to rain for the plants, I think I would have it rain in the middle of the night. That's I fair. Don't, I don't want it to rain on me. Okay. I... Mine's a little bit more detailed. Oh. I want to make up crispy outside. A little bit chilly. Okay, so same as me. Yep, same as you. Then, right around 11, I want it to get hot. Like, 85, 90. Okay? So that, and, and full sun. No humidity. Just hot and sunny, like, middle of summer day. Mm-hmm. In the evening, I want it to cool back down a little bit so that you can be outdoors, but not humid, because I don't want mosquitoes. Then, around 9, I want a steady rain shower to begin for the ambiance that lasts well into the night. Once I fall asleep around 1, 2 a.m., the rain can be over. Every four or five days, significant snowfall that lasts enough to like build up a foot of snow outside and then melt immediately on the next hot day. I love snow, but I don't want it like prolonged. That's true. Cold. I especially want snow like around December. Yeah. I get mine every five days. So that's what we would do. Wow, that is very specific. All right, next question. Curious to know if Shane, a non-driver, is much of a backseat driver. Does Hannah find his driving advice helpful? Answer this very carefully. Because I will... Yes, Shane is a backseat driver. That's fair, I agree. He likes to have a little bit of control. Uh, I typically do not find his driving advice helpful. He is in charge of directions, and I find those very helpful. He's good at it. Sometimes the map will like get messed up, and something will go wrong, and I get annoyed. And I blame him, even though it's probably not his fault. But most of the time, it goes well. But you've said many times... I'm a very skilled navigator. Yes, yeah, skilled navigator. But the driving, like you, you will say, <laughs> "Oh, I, I don't think you should be doing X, Y, Z." Like passing or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll be like, I can get around this car. We have four miles till our exit. This car is going very slowly. And Shane will be like, "I think we should just stay in this lane. Why are you passing?" You know. And then I'm like, yeah. "I don't need that." I, I can get very. Control like yeah. like very backseat driver, yeah. and then it really gets bad when Hannah is angry about something, yeah. like another driver doing something dumb, yeah. And I try to tell her to calm down, yeah. I don't like to be told to calm. That down. doesn't go well, and apparently, <laughs> and apparently, I don't convey it very well. No, no, yeah, because then you'll get mad. You'll be like, "It's no big deal. Just stop it." And I'm like, "Okay, I'm not mad at you too." <laughs> All right. How do you feel about being seen as inspirational by abled people? Do you feel like it's inspiration porn? And if so, does that ever bother you? From one disabled person who experiences this a lot to another. Yeah, so it's a pretty common thing that non-disabled people enjoy deriving inspiration from disabled people for non-inspirational things. Like disabled people doing very normal everyday activities is seen as the most amazing inspiration ever. Mm -hmm. I find it very annoying. I mean, we'll just be out in public and people will come up to me and congratulate me for smiling or being out of the house or, you know, having a good attitude. If you look at comments on videos online, like if you see a Facebook video of a disabled person who's a Paralympian, you know, and they're like doing some snowboarding, whatever. Uh There will be comments that are not like, wow, this person's a really great snowboarder or whatever is actually like interesting about the video. There will be comments that are like, this makes my problem seem so small. Yeah. And those comments are so, and we get those too. You know, yeah. like, I have nothing to complain about compared to you. 
That is so rude. Like you're insinuating that Shane has a horrible life that you and like your life is amazing by comparison. So you should never complain about anything. Like that's just not accurate, you know? Yeah. And like the typical example that you'll see a lot are like motivational posters or graphics that have like a disabled kid playing hopscotch yeah. and like a little title that says never give up. <laughs> like the kid's just being a kid. He's yeah. not being inspirational. Um, so when inspiration is derived for things that I'm doing that are not impressive. Or just from existence. Or just from yeah. being alive. Yeah. I find it very annoying. But I strive to be like good at what I do. I want to be a good writer. I want to be a good YouTuber. I want to be a good advocate. And when you respect me or find inspiration in my work, the things that I'm like trying to be good at, then that's fine. Yeah. I am. I am inspired by other writers that I love. Um, so yeah, if I'm trying to do something like worthy of inspiration, have at it. But and it's pretty. It's usually pretty easy to tell what yeah. someone means, you know, in the context of how they say it. Step one: Am I in a grocery store? <laughs> Probably not trying to be inspiring in that moment. All right, Hannah. What is your favorite part of Shane's body, not including his mind? And Shane, what is your favorite part of Hannah's body, not including her mind? Uh, LOL, please don't take this as a dirty question. I just didn't know if Shane loves Hannah's eyes or Hannah loves Shane's smile. Just what physical attractions do you have towards each other? I think it's time to talk about my foot fetish. Oh Lord. Guys, this is weird. Just, you all know me and support me, most of you do. Uh, but I'm about to tell you, just, just take it with a grain of salt and don't let it change how you think of me. From the age of like... You you love build up. Three. I think your favorite thing is building up a story. From the age of like two to like eight. I know, I was very young. I had a significant foot fetish. Feet. Can you call it a fetish when you're a child though? No, not really. I, a foot interest. I had a fascination, fascination with feet. We have a photo right here that is proof of this period of my life. Uh -huh. Whenever anyone would come over to visit my parents, I would make them a request that they remove their socks and shoes and let me perform an inspection. I told them that I wanted to be a podiatrist when I grew up, and this was how I practiced <laughs> what I would eventually do for my career. But I would play with their feet, <sighs> I would move their toes around, like, you know, it was weird. <sighs> and I was real into it. So. And people indulged you. They, they were did. like, okay. And like the fact that like the kid that can't walk yeah. is the one like really into feet. Oh, they were like. All the parents had to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, as an adult, I don't have a foot fetish. So hand his feet. Even That's kind of surprising to me, <laughs> based on that childhood. You would think, yeah. I know, but yeah. And I love your feet, but they're not my favorite part. Yeah. Um, I think your earlobes, uh, this is for real. They're really cute. Uh, her earlobes are really adorable. Her eyes are really cute. Um, I'm going with earlobes, though. Earlobes? That's my favorite, yeah. <laughs> I think... If I'm going to go with something weird like you went with earlobes, I think I would say that I really like Shane's nose. I think he has a really cute and like perfectly formed nose. And I remember when we were first even FaceTiming before we met, I was like, oh my god, that is the cutest nose. <laughs> I think it's so cute. So there you go. There you go. Earlobes and nose. Earlobes and nose. I hope you weren't expecting that. That was a fun way to wrap up Monday Drug Bag. Yeah. Talking about our earlobes and our... Noses uh -huh. and our feet. Wow. All right, everyone. Come back next week. Yep. There will be more body parts. I'm sure there will be. Forehead. Okay. Teeth. Bye, everyone. Cheat. <laughs>